And well guys, it seems that FSR4 for the RX 7000 series is getting better and better. You heard it right, not the, the RX 9000 series, FSR4 on the 7000 series. Just do it! In case you're new to the channel, you most likely didn't watch my previous videos featuring FSR4 on the RX 7000 series on Linux. Because yes, FSR4 is working on the RX 7000 series, just not officially and just not on Windows. Yes. yes. And since I'm currently testing Linux again on the 9070 XT and so on and several other cards, I noticed that I, well, I actually thought that FSR4 was running better now than it was running when I tested it before. And maybe it was kind of a, kind of a placebo effect, but it seems that it wasn't. And this user that made the post on Linux Gaming subreddit, FSR4 on RDN3 keeps getting better, and he actually delivered some results with some percentage gains uh, in terms of relative average FPS and real numbers that we can see. And just before going into that, if you want to know how to install FSR4 4 on the RDNA 3 cards, you just need to add a launch command to the Steam or Heroic Launcher, whatever launcher you're using, just add that command and it will work. Just like that. And just like that, for today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is AliExpress, with a back-to-school sale offering up to 80% off site-wide from the 13th to the 27th of August, where you can get products that look and feel like this combo. The AJS AK820 Pro, a well-built, sturdy wireless and Bluetooth keyboard with features like a volume knob, a TFT display that allows for customizable visuals like date and time, connectivity type used, backlight effects and so on. And it even shows you the battery life, battery that has 4000 milliamps allowing you to almost forget that you actually need to recharge it. And of course you have a pretty nice gasket isolation with a very pleasant key sound. You also have the Super Light Attack Shark R1, a 59 grams wireless and Bluetooth mouse with a typical right hand ergonomic design, featuring the Pixart 3311 with up to 18,000 dpi and a 300 milliamps battery that will last you up to 65 hours. And as for the price, these are definitely some of the best products that you can get in this price tag. Click the link in the description and use my codes to get up to $120 off your purchase. And since FSR4 keeps getting better and better on the RDNA 3 cards, I can't just stop thinking that AMD is really sandbagging. I'm almost 99% sure, uh, or almost 100% sure, that AMD is sandbagging FSR4 on RDNA 3 because they want to sell more RDNA 4 cards. One of the biggest selling points of the RDNA 4 cards now is the ray tracing performance, of course, but definitely the biggest selling point of RDNA 4 is FSR4. And I'm pretty sure that AMD is sandbagging FSR4 on RDNA 3, waiting for FSR Redstone. So when FSR Redstone comes to the RDNA 4 cards, you will be able to get FSR4 on the RDNA 3 once. So you still have some selling points for the RDNA 4 cards like ray regeneration, radiance caching, neural, whatever, whatever they want, machine learning frame generation and so on. And by then, since they now have new selling points for RDNA 4, they will then deliver you officially FSR4 for RDNA 3 cards. That's what I think. But well, let's go to some results. And the user is, is scaredogged97, even posts some links why the performance is getting improved because of course Valve's Linux graphics team uh, has been working around FSR4 and ray tracing lately and they have lots of things that actually improve Proton GE, Proton EM improved the performance, the Mesa Git drivers also improved the performance and so on. As for the setup this user has, it is a 7800X 3D, 64 gigabytes of RAM and the 7900 XTX with a performance BIOS but with 100% power limit and of course is using Cache OS. Let's start with the Expedition 33 results and we have for example the native results here, then we have the FSR 4.0.0 which is the version used on Linux, not the 4.0.1 because somehow the 4.0.1 is considerably more expensive computationally wise, of course, these are the average FPS and these are the 1% lows. In terms of quality, we went from 49 to 54, which is quite a good improvement. In balanced, we went from 55 to 60, again, a very good improvement. And in performance mode, we went from 61 to 67 FPS. And in terms of relative average FPS, we got, let's say, a 10% increase, 
22% increase now with balanced and 35% increase with a performance mode. And one of the things that I noticed when I was testing FSR4, for example, in the altars, was that using quality mode with a 7900 XT, not the XTX, I tested with the XT, basically delivered no performance whatsoever. Of course, we have the added clarity of FSR4 and so on, but we have no performance gains. And as we see here, we had like 0.81%, basically no performance gains, but with FSR4 implementation now, we have 10%. And remember, this post has almost one month and it will keep improving. And this, is, it, this isn't even the official implementation and it is all, already working very nice. And for example, in the performance mode, we went from 23% 23, uh, 23 of performance gain, which is not that much, to 35%, which is actually pretty decent. And again, this is on a non-supported FSR4 card, like the, the XTX. In Cyberpunk, uh, the note is that, of course, this is the, the pre-2.3 patch, 2.21. And as I was telling you before, in native we had 65 FPS and in the quality mode using FSR4 we had 64 meaning that we actually had lower FPS when using FSR quality mode even though the resolution was much much lower and of course because FSR4 needs power to do the algorithm and since this, these cards don't really support FP8. They need to be the code or the algorithm needs to be translated to FP16 and that causes a performance impact. But now we actually went from 64 to 72 FPS, which is a major difference, especially in the 1% lows where we went from 50 to 41 and now we go from 50 to 61. In balanced, of course, we go uh, from 74 to 84, which is a big difference. And in performance mode, we go from 86 to 99. And if we go and see the relative average FPS, in terms of performance, we go from plus 31%, which again is not that much, to plus 51%. And in the quality mode, we, we, we go from minus 2%, 1.98, to plus 974 which is a big improvement, if you ask me. And I believe the first one that allowed us to use FSR4 was the Proton GE 108. We are now currently on the 1010, or maybe they already released the 1011, but the last time that I tested, we were on the 1010, and the problem, and um, the performance, not the problems, <laughs> the performance uh, was considerably increased. And as we can see here, the, the same happened with the Proton EM, which is one of the side versions that the Glorious Egg Roll also does. So it's Proton GE and Proton. On EM, I believe. There are other users posting results, for example, here. Um, when going from Proton EM 1023 to the Proton EM 1025, in Claire Obscure uh, Expedition 33, they were already having some enhanced results. Going from 55 to 57 in quality mode, 60 to 63 in balanced and performance mode going from 66 to 69. Again, this is not a huge performance, but it keeps getting better. And this was just by switching from Proton EM 1023 to Proton EM 1025. And again, it will keep getting better. And this makes me think if we are going to see actual in interesting performance numbers, at least on par with XCSS. Um, because XCSS does take more performance to run, or at least on AMD cards, of course, than FSR, because one is mach machine learning based and uses DPA4, and the other one, um, well, is just made kind of free. I don't really know what kind of algorithm FSR 3.1.4 uses, but it is lighter to run, but at the same time doesn't bring as much quality. And um, I just really want to know if we will get to the point where the implementation of FSR 4.0.0 gets even close to what we get with XCSS because, for example, in Cyberpunk, we went from 74 to 84, which is a massive increase, but at the same time, uh, XCSS delivers 96 in the same, well, in the same card, in the same AMD card. But if we, if we get even close, even close to the XCSS level of performance, it will get insane, especially since these cards don't officially support FSR4. And for the users that keep asking about the RX 6000 series RDNA 2, RDNA 2 isn't going to have any kind of support for FSR4. Why? Firstly, it doesn't really have AI cores, and I know that the RDNA 3 cards don't really have 
AI cores as well, don't, they don't really have Tensor cores, but they have one thing that is presented on this comment. The user Bell asks a question saying, is it possible that RDNA 2 could use FP16 to emulate FP8 or any other necessary stuff to get FSR4 working? And we immediately have an answer here, RDNA 2 is not only missing FP8, RDNA 3 is also missing FP8, by the way, but the whole cooperative matrix stuff altogether. And this is one of the things that makes FSR4 possible on on uh, RDNA 3, even though RDNA 3 doesn't have FP8 instructions, because it does have the cooperative matrix stuff. And even though it takes more performance to emulate since we need to use FP16, uh, it kind of runs, but again, probably not impossible to emulate, of course, but the relative performance hit would be even greater. Meaning that, for example, if you're running 4K with an RX 6950 XT and you enable F uh, FSR4 quality mode, you'll get less performance than 4K native, even though you're using only 66% of the resolution and maybe even performance mode will deliver you more or less the same performance fps wise so yeah not worth it at all and just to end the video we have another user saying i am on an rx 7700 xt for me g proton 109 is faster than proton em 1025 and again i'm using the i was using the 1010 which is supposed to be faster checked with dead sources um, mr something i don't really know with Mesa 25.2.1, whatever. And as for the results, we have FSR 4.0.0. Again, Proton G versus EM, depends on the game. And in terms of upscaling time, uh, it is like 1.7 versus 1.9 milliseconds. 1440p 3.1 versus 3.5. 4K at 6.7 versus 7.5 milliseconds. So yeah, if you're using Proton G, you're getting even better results in terms of, of course, upscaling performance with FSR 4. And well, guys, that's all for this video. As you've seen, FSR 4 is working better and better on the RX 7000 series as we speak. More updates will keep coming and the performance will keep increasing. And yeah, that's my dog. And the performance will keep increasing and that's great for the RDNA 3 users. So, just to conclude, RDNA 3 users or RX 7000 series users, you can expect FSR 4 to work on Windows soon. And again, I'm pretty sure that AMD is kind of sandbagging, in, in, sandbagging FSR 4 on the RDNA 3 cards in order to sell more and more RDNA 4 cards. And I'm pretty sure that FSR 4 will come officially for the RDNA 3 users as soon as FSR Redstone releases to the RDNA 4 ones. Because that way, AMD can keep selling RDNA 4 cards because of FSR Redstone, and they will keep selling the remaining of the, uh, the remaining stock of the RDNA 3 cards, because, of course, they now have FSR 4 upscaling. Maybe it's just me thinking too much, but I believe that will happen. And if, and if that doesn't really happen, I believe that it will come with some well, some modded drivers for Windows as well, because if it works on Linux, it will definitely work on Windows sooner or later, even if it isn't official. And by the way, just comment to see if you are using FSR4 on your RDNA 3 card on Linux. Let me and the community know if it is working fine or not. See you in the next video. Cheers.